Hey kids, what's happening? You know, when we were kids, our parents used to take us on these mystery rides. And uh, we never knew where they were taking us. Of course, Dad always knew where we were, where we were going. Uh, but uh, today, it's no mystery to us, thanks to my entertainment director here. <laughs> she has found something cool for us to do today. That's a jet engine. <laughs> it's another jet engine. Old junk ones, too. They need a lot of work, it looks like. <laughs> Anyway, we were at the MAPS, M-A-P-S. Museum. It is an aviation museum, so uh, there's a lot of airplanes here, aircraft. Uh, it'll be pretty cool. Looking forward to checking it out. Look at this airplane engine up here. Wow. That thing's huge. So, it looks like down this way we've got some engines. This is a Wright uh, J65 turbojet engine. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen a jet engine up close. Those are big engines. And they make a lot of noise. And to think that these big heavy engines actually get airborne. That's hard to believe. I mean, those things got to weigh tons, but yet they can fly. Now look at this, the Sopwith Camel. The bi-wing, or tri-wing. It's got, you know, one, two, three wings. There. You climb in the little cockpit right there. That would be crazy to fly in. The wind in your face. Boy, now you sit in this thing, and it's like you're looking right down. It's like you're, oh my goodness, well, I guess you would be flying, but it's like <laughs> nothing but air around you. Passenger in the back. That looks like an Apache. That's what it looks like sitting in the cockpit looking out. And then the other guy sits back behind here, so this is would be your view. Oh, I hit my head on the uh the window here. That is a Cobra. A wooden propeller. And then it has like brass on the edge. And that's a Fairchild P19. Again, it has the two seats, open cockpit. A4 Skyhawk. Flown by the 1981 Blue Angels team. Pretty awesome. They don't look that big when they're up in the air, but when you see them up close, that's a pretty big plane. That's a B-26 Marauder. It's a gunship.
So that's a 500 pound bomb, mm -hmm. and this plane would carry about 20 of them. Okay. And I'm standing in the bomb bay. There's two of them. There's one here and one uh, behind you. Oh, there's another bomb bay back there. Wow. And if you had to go from one end of the plane to the other, this is all you had to walk on. Ooh. You had to squeeze be between those two. Uh, Oh, I don't know that I could fit in between <laughs> there. <laughs> and up front would be the radio man, navigator, pilot, co-pilot, bombardier. Yeah. And there's a cockpit up there. That's where the typical bomb would drop. Probably Must be the gun sight. Gunner sits there. Look at the bullets on that thing. Good grief. big model of the, the Essex, which I think they sunk the Essex, and a model of a Sherman tank. The United States Marines raised the American flag on Mount Shiribachi at Iwo Jima, February 23rd, 1945, as a part of a Goodyear Corsair. That's our next project, and they got the pilot in there, dummy pilot. Oh my gosh. The silver bullet, a B-61 nuclear bomb. Good grief. And what did these flare out for here? For control. Oh, okay. See how this one's all tucked in? Yeah, That's this one's closed and then that one's expanded. To slow down the uh, uh -huh. set. Now this is the Sidewinder missile. Just aim it in the general direction and it'll find its target. It finds its target. It has its own GPS. Uh, followed by heat. Oh, heat seeking. Heat source, yeah. Huh, cool. Huge bag. So that's the blimp mm -hmm. bag folded up. Yeah. The wow. Gondola. And this is the gondola. Yeah, and have an engine on each side. We took or the passenger out. car. So these going inside the Goodyear. The Spirit of Akron. It's like a bus. The seats in the back. And then there's the pilot controls. Here's what it looks like. There's a picture. <laughs> the Goodyear blimp. Huh. Pilot sits there, co pilot sits over here. And there is their view. Ready for takeoff. Now I can actually sit in the cockpit of this. F-86D, which is the plane back there. Best way to enter is uh, put your foot in here, your left foot, and then okay. your right foot. I must be getting that horse. Ready to take off. Pull it down, clunk. What's the cockpit look like here? Come on in. It's pretty tight, but uh, roomy for me. I got the that glass up above stick here. here. Uh, gun sight. There's two lenses. Gun sight right here. It would produce a circle and a crosshair. Mm hmm. Projected on it. Huh. Drag chute. <laughs> yeah, in case you was going into an airport or runway that was too short. Yeah, aircraft carrier landing. Boy, so many dials and switches on these yeah, things. Yeah, on both sides. Uh, they're even on the side here. That's the radar in the bottom. 
the big thing. Oh, this is radar. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's the throttle. And if you had to bail out for whatever reason, you would pull this, and that would release the canopy. And then these handles, there's one on each side. You would grab a hold of them, squeeze the lever together, uh, keep your elbows in, and pull up. And when you did, two rockets on the back of this would shoot you out of the top plane. And then the two would fall away and you go down your brake. I'd go right through the ceiling. <laughs> that would yeah, be quite a ride to eject, uh, eject yourself from one of these. That would be one heck of a ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. It did so fast. You know, it would be, and then all of a sudden the air hit you because you're still traveling at the speed of the plane. Oh my gosh. The G-forces would be incredible. So on this plane, this pod drops down. And those are all the rockets down there. They could be fired. Must have been set up for the wings fold up on this thing. Yeah, it was maybe so they could uh, storm closer in the aircraft carriers. They could storm in the aircraft carrier. Our tour guy says that this is an example of how you can make a brick fly if you put enough engines on it. Now this one's missing the jet engine. Yeah, we take all the engines out. It's an F4 Phantom. Mm -hmm. But you kept your engines going and at a good rate because if you didn't, then you had enough power to take off and come back around and try again. The cable hook. Yep. Oh, yeah, good grief. This jet is enormous. You just picture them being smaller, but they're huge. That's 110 years old. Made before the Wright Brothers plane and was pulled first by horses and then by a Model T, but it actually got off the ground. The Goodyear Drake it could, it had wheels, it could land on land, but it also could float in the water. It had these pontoons out on the wings. And this is the F 16 fighter. The Fighting Falcon. Look at that thing up in the ceiling. Oh, that's like a little reconnaissance plane up there. It's a little thing. It's a MiG-17. The Russian technology. Not much room in there. The Fallen Feathers Memorial of Ohio. And these are all carved wooden feathers. These feathers represent men and women whose lives were lost during the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. The Vietnam Tree of Lives. Dog tags. Actual dog tags hanging. Well, that's a rocket. Yay, boys. Outside aircraft. Now to go. head outside. You ready for this? It's gonna be a little chilly, a little windy out there. So zip up. This has always been a favorite of mine, the DC-3, the Douglas. You see it's got the uh, 
ruptured duck, it says on there. Twin engine. It was used as a cargo plane, but they also used them as gunships in Vietnam. They put guns on them. It's a very nice utilitarian plane. I don't know why I like this plane. I just always did. I always thought they were cool. And they hear the sound of those twin engines roaring through the air. You can you can tell right away, or I can. Colonel John H. Glenn. Yeah, that's John Glenn's plane there. out here, but at least it's not real windy. Don't jinx us now. The wind will kick up any minute. <laughs> I hope not. Well, this is a nonprofit organization that's run strictly by volunteer. Yeah, So pretty neat. And the volunteers that work here really know a lot about what they're talking about. It's pretty interesting. So that is the Polish insignia on the back a Russian plane used by Poland. I sound like I know a lot what I'm talking about, but unless it has one of these things that tells me exactly what it is, I wouldn't have a clue. Now this was a plane that obviously was on the USS Saratoga, the Saratoga being an aircraft carrier, a Navy aircraft carrier. And you see how the wings fold up so they could store them close. <clears throat> they could fit more planes together that way. But now look how high up I am. I couldn't imagine having to climb out of this thing. And then you got to climb down a ladder to, to get in and out of it. That would be pretty limber. It's a Corsair. Entered service during the Vietnam War. Huh. A Corsair too. It was introduced <clears throat> to replace the United States Navy's Douglas A-4 Skyhawk. Now this big scoop thing on the front is where the air draw was drawn into the jet engine. And as he told us, all the jet engines have been removed. back we'll look in the jet engine port the engine is gone but you can see the intake there so this is where the engine sat 